Hey everybody, this is Chris Coyer with video screencast number 130 for CSS Tricks. I think I'm going to call something like, uh, you know, the first few minutes with Grunt. And I'm sure you've heard of it. Most people have. I'm here. I am at gruntjs.com. Grunt, the JavaScript task runner. So this is for people who are familiar with it and don't totally understand it, could use a kind of intro tutorial. Um, I've written an article for 24 ways that's, that's not out as I'm recording this, but will be um, by the time you're viewing this. So it's kind of a, I wanted that article to be, you know, for these people who kind of have heard of it and just, uh, but just think, think things like grunt are a little weird and uh, confusing and uh, could use a, a Chris style screencast, if you will, to help them through that because I was you so, so not long ago and I'm not a master of grunt, but I have come to love it and I'm trying to level up my skills with it because of how powerful it is. So Task Runner, uh, Task is a, a just a it's a just a little job, just a little thing you need to do. So a way that you can think of that is all of these little things as front end developers that we're kind of told are important things to do. Um, and I was even thinking like, man, remember this video? Let's do simple stuff to make our websites faster. Where I'm talking about you should compress and minify all your CSS and JavaScript because that's good, and then you're not sending stuff over the internet that's unnecessary. You should optimize your images because of all the, uh, you know, the benefit you get from that without hurting the quality. And you should work in SAS because it can do those things for you and abstract your CSS writing, which just makes you more efficient and it just makes CSS more fun again, really. Uh, and you should work in like little chunks of CSS and JS because then uh, it's just easier to kind of find stuff and stay organized and have a good system for your front end development. All those little things like compiling SAS, optimizing images, concatenating files, those are tasks. Uh, so Grunt is a, is a little program to help you run those tasks when you want to. So that's all it is really. Grunt by itself doesn't do anything. It's just a tool to help you run those little tasks. So I have a project on the desktop here. Let's see if we can just open the index file here. Oh, that's kind of messed up, isn't it? Oops. Um, yeah, okay. No, it's not messed up. This is just uh, an index, a little project. It's got some CSS, it's got some images, it's got some JavaScript. Uh, and what we want to do is all those little tasks we just talked about on this little project. So if I open it up in Sublime Text here, we have not, now we can, we can work on stuff. I could, for example, change this to whatever and reload the page out here. This is the oh, kind of a one-to-one -one here. This is the project that we're working with. So in our CSS folder, we have kind of a global.scss file here. And we need to process it. When this file changes, I need to process it with SAS and turn it into a .css file that this can use. And we're not doing that right now. That's why it kind of looks unstyled is because there is no CSS file that's getting linked up here. We want Grunt to do that for us. Now, in the past, we've used stuff like, uh, for example, CodeKit. You can see it's still here in my doc. CodeKit is a totally awesome software that can be used for this. Um, CodeKit is kind of like a very opinionated version of Grunt. It, it, it runs a bunch of tasks for you with kind of minimal setup and a very nice UI and stuff. And I love CodeKit and use it for uh, some projects, but, but Grunt is kind of like the super nerdy version of CodeKit in that it's not opinionated at all about the different tasks you can run and you can really customize the crap out of it. So uh, that's kind of where we're at there. We could get this working in CodeKit in like two seconds, but we're going to spend the time to learn Grunt so that just so we, that, you know, we have an understanding of it and the kind of customizability of it. So Grunt is absolutely not running on this yet. We need to kind of get it running. I have a, I'm using here div shot or something like that to rearrange those windows just in case you're curious. Let's follow the getting started tutorial here in Grunt to, uh, to kind of get us going here. So the first step it, it says is installing the CLI. CLI stands for uh, command line interface here. And it's what means when we open the terminal and we type the word Grunt that it knows what that is and will do something. 
So I'm going to have this terminal window open here. And this is where I hope I'm not losing you already. Some people are uh, rather opposed to using the terminal. Some people are comfortable there, whatever. Uh, just know that I'm not a super terminal hero, but I have come to, uh, to, to not be afraid of it for really quite simple stuff um, as we're doing here. I don't live my whole day in here navigating around directories and copying folders and shooting stuff around and uh, that kind of stuff. And that you, even that would be kind of the easy stuff in the terminal. Uh, but I, I'm not afraid to use it for just installing and running some kind of kind of simple software. And I hope that that um, you'll follow this and won't be too. So if you type a command that doesn't exist, it'll just say command not found. It doesn't know what that is. But it does know what the word grunt is now, and that's going to say, oh, I, there is no grunt file at the current location that you're at. Uh, but grunt, but it, it did something, right? So the word grunt in my terminal now means something, and that's because I've done this. I've run this command in the terminal uh, so that my terminal knows what the word grunt is. npm install dash g grunt cli. And now npm, that's a command too, you might say, and indeed it is. So if we go to npm, um, that is a, uh, it's a package manager for Node.js. So if you don't have that command, uh, that's no big deal. You can download and you can d download a Macintosh installer and literally just like open the file, double click it and install it. So it's the install process for Node.js and thus NPM um, is really easy and doesn't involve the command line at all. So if you type... Um, this npm install and it's like there is no command npm you just need to do that step first and then you have that available so we have that and that's just that's we're ready to go in that in that case now uh working with an existing grunt project we're not we're actually starting a brand new one here so a typical setup will involve adding two new files to your project package.json and the grunt file um, cool. So let's do that. Our project does not have either of those files. So let's make a new file and we'll, what is it? What do we call it? Package.json. So it's going to save and we're going to call it package.json. That's the format that Node.js and NPM kind of want for your project. Uh, it, it it kind of lists the dependencies that that it needs. You can you might think of npm like if you've ever heard of a gem uh, in Ruby on Rails. It's kind of like I need like a login system for my Ruby on Rails project. Well, there's probably a gem for that, right? So you don't have to kind of write all that stuff from scratch. That's a little bit how Node.js works. And that login says Grunt would be like that login system. Grunt is the thing that has its own set of dependencies and its own bunch of code that runs. Maybe even think of it like a WordPress plugin, you know, it adds some functionality to this base system. So it gives us a bit of a template here, we can just kind of copy and paste that. Uh, and in it kind of uh, it recommends some stuff here, uglify node unit, grunt, it's giving us more than maybe we need right now, I guess we could we could remove some of this stuff. But I guess let's just let's just do what it says and, and leave it in place. You could change your project name or your version or anything like that if you wanted to. Uh, and then hit save. Um, yeah, and then we can type um, npm install for ex for this example. This will install the latest version of NIT. I think I think just an npm install will do here. So we need to get we need to like change directories in the terminal to the point where we're in our project. Right now it just says my name right here. That's just my home folder. Uh, that's not where I can run uh, th this package.json is, is inside of this project. We need to run that command from there. So if you're real lazy like me, you can just type cd space and then drag this folder onto here and hit return and it will kind of cd you to the right location there instead of having to kind of navigate your way to that folder. Anyway, that's the lazy man's change directory in terminal. Also notice I'm using a program called iTerm here, and I don't even remember exactly why I'm using that. It's just a third-party software for a terminal. The 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 just the terminal program that comes on Macs is fine too, and uh, or whatever you use the command line with on another system, I'm sure will be fine. I don't even I can't even remember why I use iTerm. It has like a couple extra features or something that I'm sure I don't even use. N P M install. And it's going to look at this file, this package.json file, and it's going to be like, oh, I see. 
Uh, he wants to use grunt and he wants to, he wants this and he wants this and he wants this. I'm going to go out to the NPM re- registry or whatever and just start downloading all the stuff that's going to, that is needed for these, these things that he's listed that he wants. So it's done that and it's downloaded all kinds of stuff and it's made this new folder. You might, you might understand that's a, uh, uh, that wasn't there before. This wasn't in our project. It's node modules, and it has all the folders for all these things that we've listed as dependencies. It's also made a git ignore folder for us, uh, which is pretty interesting, I guess. That's decided like, hey, you know that node modules folder? It's not the kind of thing you want to put in your own <laughs> version control repository. So here's a bunch of stuff that you probably just won't ever want to upgrade. So it just put that there for us. A little opinionated, but that's fine. That's, you know, it's probably a smart default in a way. So the next file that we need to make is that grunt file. And it's always referred to as grunt file, but really a grunt file needs to be grunt file.js uh, as it's kind of listed here. So let's make a new folder or a new file rather. And we're gonna save it and we're gonna call it capital grunt file.js. Uh, cool. And then it will probably give us a little bit of boilerplate code for that as well. So cool, let's just copy and paste the whole thing. You know, we're just trying to get this basically going. Um, I don't know that we need to spend too much time dissecting what every word of this does, but this is just what a grunt file kind of looks like. Uh, This part right here from lines kind of four through 15 are the configuration uh, for one particular kind of, actually, this is just configuration for the entire uh, grunt itself, but this right here is one particular task, uglify. Uglify is like minify. It's like taking JavaScript and kind of uh, squishing it down um, uh, and kind of you know rewriting variable names to be smaller and removing white space and that kind of stuff. So at the bottom of this file, you can say, here's a task. It uses the grunt contrib uglify name, and that's the name of the task that we want to be available. And then we're going to register that task. So the name of the task is default. And here's an array of tasks that we want to run, uglify. Uglify matches this. So when we basically... Uh, tasks in grunt are like this. They're like grunt space and then the task name here. We run it. But it, in, so we could write the task name in this case is default, but default is nothing. So grunt, if we type grunt now, it's going to try just by itself, it's going to try to run this uglify thing. Uh, and this might uh, screw up a little bit because it's kind of depending on some stuff. Uh, that may or may not exist in our world. We need to kind of fix up this configuration to kind of do what we want. Let's skip this banner stuff. Let's think about build. So th- I guess we'll just we'll just plug along with what it's it's wanting us to do here. Um, the source is a JavaScript file, and the destination is a JavaScript file dot min js, and it's putting it's assuming that we're going to want to put it in some folder called build. Uh, that's just a default saying that like the, anytime you see a build folder, it's kind of like this wasn't authored by a person. This was kind of made by a computer. It was kind of built by a computer. So don't mess with those files. It's not really an authored file. It was it was just kind of created in this case, created by Grunt. So in our JavaScript, let's make a new folder and we'll call it build. Uh, and that's where we're going to kind of want to output to. So well, let's just let's just say we just have this global JS file. Let's just call it global. And this is JS slash global. And this is JS slash build global. So this is kind of the input in a way. We'll just say uh, input. And this is the output. So we'll just hit save there. And if we go to the terminal, hopefully we can just type grunt as we already have here. I'll juice it up in case that's harder to see. It should just kind of run. Uh, And it does. And it says running uglify build file js slash build slash global dot min js was created. Done without errors. That's good to see. That never happens on these screencasts, right? So we just created that folder called build over here. And we didn't put anything in it. But you see grunt did put something in it for us. So we can see a little bit of code in there. If we open our own global.js, you can see that we have a little bit of JavaScript code in there that does something. Uh, But now we have this one and all the white space has been stripped away from it. So that's what Uglify is doing here. So we didn't have to do anything. 
we just let grunt do it kind of automatically, uh, and, and that's that's cool. So, so every, anytime we change this, if we were to write like, hi mom in here and save it, uh, we could come back out to the terminal, type grunt, it will rebuild that file, and it will probably strip away that comment. So you can imagine that this was rebuilt, but it had to read this file again, and it stripped away that comment. So what we could do a better demo. Let's change it to 5,000 seconds. Then we'll run it again. We'll come out here, and it will say, theoretically, <laughs> Oh, look at that. It changed it to 5E3 as for at least syntax for 5,000 seconds. I didn't even know it did that. Cool. But it just made it all the fewer bytes of code that will then have to traverse the internet to power your website. Okay, cool. So we actually have done a really good job here so far of uh, having a grunt task work. Uh, and it, hopefully that kind of opens up your eyes a little bit of, of kind of what's possible. Let's add at least one more task. Let's do the SAS thing. Um, yeah, but before we do that, actually, let's let's see if we can uh, alter this to because we have some more. There's more files here. There's there's global.js, but there's a file of libs, and you know, a lot of times when you see a libs um, folder in a project like that, it means like these are just like JavaScript dependencies that we probably won't touch as authors of this site. Thing like jQuery, most of us don't like alter jQuery in our own project. It's just a library, and we just chuck it in there. In this case, we're using a carousel plugin. Again, we're probably not going to change the the core code of that plugin. We're just going to dump it in there and load it up as a dependency. So uh, we need to kind of load those files as well, not just specifically say our source is global, but we want to specify uh, kind of multiple. Let's see. I'm trying to in the background here, kind of find the uh, the documentation for Uglify. So if you ever want to find this, we could just like Google this. Surely there's docs out there that will explain this. Uh, this is the Git repo for it. And a lot of times these uh, have nice readmes on GitHub to, to find this thing that kind of specify what the syntax kind of looks like for Uglify. So here's some examples. Uh, uglify the files are this okay so the source can be um, an array so, you know and I see that through these kind of uh, square brackets here so source could be like this let's just save and make sure that that runs it did indeed, so that's cool. So then we can specify multiple sources that then get kind of squished together. <laughs> I hope so anyway. So I wonder if we could go JS and if we can't, we'll just figure it out. JS libs star.js. So either one of those things. So let's hit save there and try to run grunt and see if it likes that. It might not. It might. Oh, it did indeed. So if we open up the min now, well, look at all that. Yeah. It's, it went and grabbed our libraries too. So let's look at that line again. I was kind of nervous that I didn't know what I was doing there, but I guess uh, I did okay. We changed source from being just this string, which is fine and it accepts that as input. We changed it to an array. Uh, oops. <laughs> Z. An array at first, which was just the same exact thing, only it's one item in the array. And then we said, here's another string, another file that we want to point to that gets kind of squished together in the destination. And we said that file lives at, sl uh, at JS slash libs. And then we could have said just like jQuery.js and listed a very specific file, but we said star, meaning just any file that you find, dot JS. So now three files are going to get squished together, global and anything that it finds in libs that ends in .js, which are these two files. And notice they are not minified. They are kind of uh, uh, fully expanded JavaScript files. So then when we save this and run grunt, the minified file includes jQuery and the library or the owl library and whatever and our own code. Uh, I wonder how well we could control the, the order of it. We should probably do it like this. I was noticing that our OWL code was at the top there. Uh, and we are we kind of intuitively know, well, <laughs> I shouldn't say intuitively. I mean, d d d 
these are dependencies, and perhaps you've run into this when you've used a jQuery and a jQuery plugin before. You can't load the plugin before you load jQuery itself, otherwise there'll be errors, because it's a dependency. The plugin depends on jQuery, so jQuery really needs to run first before the plugin can run. And while I was looking at our minified file, I was looking at dot owl carousels, the first line up here, and then jQuery is getting loaded. That's surely going to cause some error. So I wonder if um, Grunt here will honor our, our the order of this array uh, is the order that it kind of squishes things together in. And it looks like it does. So the first line doesn't have that owl carousel stuff anymore. Uh, that's probably way at the bottom. And it is, and that's and so now our minified file is in the right order. So that's cool that it kind of respects the order of this array. So great. Let's add at least one more task here because all of we've done so far is minified some JavaScript. That's nice, but it's not. Uh, it's I'm sure it hasn't compelled you entirely to uh, to work on SAS. So let's. If you're like thinking about it for the first time, you'd be like, uh, grunt. Um, compile SAS or something. That's like, that would probably be the approach is just to kind of Google it and be like, oh, I see. These contrib plugins, plugins I believe, are mean, if there's contrib in the middle of it, means that it's kind of like an official um, grunt plugin. So that's kind of a good sign usually. And let's just read the getting started. Oh, okay, it requires 0.4.0. Oh, cool. Here's how you should do it. You should just type npm install grunt contrib SAS saved app. Okay. So we'll do that, we'll go back to our terminal, and we'll just run that. It told us to run it, so we just will. Okay, boo, boo, boo. it's just gonna run some stuff, cool. That is the way that you should generally do this. Uh, now you'll notice if we come out here and we go into our package.json file, it has added that to the bottom of the package.json file. It's kind of a shortcut to literally putting this in here ourselves and then going back and running npm install generically and having it figure out what it doesn't have yet and doing that and whatever. So if we go into node modules, Grunt SAS is there. Cool. So now we can go into our Grunt file and now we can use it. Now that Grunt Contrib SAS is available to us and we've kind of downloaded and installed it, now we can use it. It doesn't do anything automatically. We need to update our Grunt file.js to say, explain how we want that to work. So we need this guy, Grunt Node Tasks Contrib SAS and stuff. Um, and you can imagine, man, once we have like 10 of these things going on, we're like loading up all these different tasks and this, this file gets rather big. And that's one of the things that you could like level up on later if you want to, if you start getting grunt to start doing 50 things for you. I mean, that would be pretty extreme, but a dozen is, is, would be reasonable. You can f start figuring out ways to kind of organize this and be smarter with your grunt file. But for now, we're just doing some very simple stuff, right? So we put that line in there. So now that task is available to us, which is cool. So now grunt sass will work. Even that will work without even registering a specific task. Uh, cool. So maybe we will say um, we're going to need to define a new uh, configuration here. So that's how we might do that. We have uglify, but we have sass as well too. And now our default task, we want to run sass as well as uglify. So we're just gonna comma separate. Please run both of those things for us, Mr. Default Task. Uh, and then we need to kind of configure it. So a lot of times what we'll do is just kind of come over to the docs here and scroll through it and try to find a configuration for it. So there's the SAS and there's dist here. Let's just kind of grab all of that uh, and kind of paste it in there. <clears throat> cool, and so there's a bunch of comments that's making it a little hard to read in this case, so let's just kind of clean house a little bit. Great, and then we will kind of organize it indentation-wise. Uh, great, cool. So, option style expanded. Um, that's just an option for how SAS wants to uh, 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 kind, of, kind of do its thing. What's the final .css file look like? In our case, um, I've often advocated, if you've seen you know, talk about SAS and other screencasts before, the compressed um, is kind of the way to go for building a kind of production website. That's the one, just like minification, it removes all the white space and removes all the comments and stuff. Well, expanded is exactly the opposite of that. It enforces nice white space and leaves all the comments in and stuff like that. Uh, we don't want to do that. We're just going to compress it down. So, and then this is just a little bit like this. It's source and destination. They just have a little bit of a different structure for it. They, they call it files and then .css would be the destination, right? And this would be the uh, source. So let's just do one for now. 
Uh, and what do we have going here? We have global.scss. So that's the that would be this. So this would be CSS slash global. Uh, and the output then would be like, maybe we should put it in a build folder, just like we did for JavaScript. Let's make a new folder. We'll call it build. And then we'll say, please put it in CSS build slash global.css. Cool. So let's come up to the command line and just type grunt sass and just run this command only. Grunt sass. Gosh, hopefully that will work. Oh, it did indeed. It created a SAS cache folder. Uh, that's something that we should put in our git ignore because it literally, you don't have to put cache in your version control repository. So actually it's already there in our git ignore file. Very nice. Uh, and it looks like it built the file. Remember we just made that folder and there was nothing in it, but Grunt made it for us. So now if we open that again, wow, look at all that. Look at all that stuff, that's fabulous. So we don't need to list the, de the dependencies in this case like we did with libs up here in JavaScript because Sask already has baked into it the ability to include other files. So if we, look, if we open global.scss and look in it, we can see at import normalize, at import um, the owl carousel, CSS, and stuff. We have these import files in there. It's Sass itself that's pulling these in. Uh, which is great. So uh, it's it's pulling in normalize in the carousel and the theme and stuff in which to build this. Now this is file that we could use in our in. This is what we would want to link up in our index file is the point. So let's look at our index.html file and say, uh, in the case of our CSS, we're putting at CSS build global, and then as far as JavaScript, we're putting it at JS build and what do we call it? Global. So if we load this up, yeah, dude, we have a working carousel. Uh, yeah, and we have CSS that you can see and it's all working and how fabulous is that? So we've only covered two grunt tasks. We've, we've um, covered uh, squishing together and minifying JavaScript and we have covered compiling SAS. But we didn't yet cover optimizing images, but you can imagine what that's like, like grunt optimize images. Oh, there it is, grunt contrib image min. I will just look at the docs for it. I will run this npm command. I will put this task in my grunt file. I will look at the configuration, point it at the source files and at the destination files, and we're good to go. You know, th this thing, it becomes a little repetitive really, uh, and then you just kind of tweak the commands to, to get just how you want. The beauty of this being that this grunt file then goes up into your version control repository, so anybody else that pulls down this project they don't have to mess with any of this. They're like, oh, cool, it's a grunt project. I'll just kind of change directories in my terminal to it, um, run npm install because I, that's that will set it all up and get me the right node modules. And then I'll just probably type grunt and it will just do the things that we want. Now, sometimes you'll have to read the, reposi the, the notes in that repository because the different grunt tasks can have different names. Sometimes they'll set it up so grunt does something useful. I've seen in a lot of projects where it's, it's um, they have a task, they register a task here in grunt land um, that's called something like dev or watch or something. Uh, one, a couple other things that uh, is very common in grunt projects that I do in all mine and you'll see is commonly is to have grunt spin up a server for you. So for example, we're looking at this project here just at a file URL in the browser. That's kind of obnoxious. For, for example, if we wanted to use TypeKit on this project or something, you can't, this isn't a real URL. The, the fonts just wouldn't load because it's not like a real server. We couldn't do Ajax from here, all that type of stuff. You really kind of need to spin up a local server server to enable that stuff. You know, file paths will be wrong when you're at, at a file URL like this. So you can find um, there's a really super easy grunt plugin to spin up a server for you. And then it will be at something like 127.0.0.1 slash or, or colon 8000 or something like that. And then you can visit that uh, in your browser and, and grunt has fired that up for you. You can... Um, yeah, there's Grunt Watch is the one that we're not going to cover here because this is going on and on and on, but definitely look up Grunt Watch. So what you might do, what a default task in Grunt might do is fire up two things. It's going to fire up the server and then it's going to fire up Grunt Contrib Watch. And, and see what this says. 
run tasks whenever watched files change. So we're going to set up a configuration end up called watch. And watch is going to basically be a file path, something like CS, CSS. So as you're saying, anything in the CSS file, when that changes, and then you give it tasks that you want it to run. So in our case, if anything changes in the CSS file, we want to run this. We want to run the task that we've already defined called SAS. And if anything changes in the JavaScript file, run Uglify. Run the task that we've already set up that, that matters when JavaScript changes. Because we don't want to run all our grunt tasks all the time when anything changes. We want to only run the tasks that matter when we change. So instead of us ever having to go out here to the terminal and typing grunt and hitting return, watch just does that for us. It's watching your file system on your computer and running the tasks you want it to run uh, <clears throat> when necessary. So that's really powerful. So a lot of times there'll be a grunt dev task or grunt watch or something that you run and it will spin up that server and, 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 then, and, then, and then start watching files. So ultimately, when you're using Grunt in the, in the real world, you're not out here in the terminal very much typing all these different Grunt things. You just like fire up Grunt uh, and then just kind of let it do its thing because Watch is doing all the rest of the work, which is really great. So you can see how kind of not super difficult that was. It's a little funky at first with the NPM and the getting stuff installed and this weird Grunt file with this weird syntax in here. This doesn't need to be overly comfortable. I don't think. You just need to kind of be able to plug your way through it and kind of look at weird syntax like this and kind of just figure out what it's trying to do and just alter it to your own needs on your own project and you're kind of off to the races. And it's free and it's open source and it has a huge community. It's just a kind of nice thing to do. Like I said, it's a very opinion or opinionless version of running tasks. You can really nerd out here and do uh, uh, you can get as specific and kind of as you want about how you want your own project to build. You can even have this thing, you know, push it, push, write a little task to have it push up to GitHub for you and write a little one to FTP it to your server for you. And there's there's not just like 10 grunt plugins. There's just a zillion, <laughs> you know, I'm not sure how many there are, but there's a lot of people that are like, wow, grunt is so cool. I'm going to release this little build step I have as a grunt plugin because it's just it's one of those things like then people will use it for sure like i have this idea i'm gonna make it a wordpress plugin just because then people will use it it's a little bit like that it's uh you know if, if you make something kind of cool a, a build step process that's cool people just generally release it as a grunt plugin because then it's kind of easy easier to use make your sprites for you that kind of thing so check out the 24 ways article for a written version of this more copy and pasteable code i have a bit of a a boilerplate uh in my github so at github.com slash chris core you can find my little github uh, my little grunt boilerplate, which isn't a lot more complicated uh, than this is, but it has an example of what watch might be like. There's some extra concatenation steps. There's JS hint for get, you know letting us know about problem, and then here's that watch step, like you know watch my CSS folder and run SAS, run auto prefixer, run a minification step. Here's you know watch the images when the images folder changes, run image minification. Here's the server, how easy it is to spin up a server. So I'm not the master of grunt. I'm just I'm just saying I've powered through it and I think it's a really nice for for individual projects and kind of nerding out at that level that we all kind of like to. So uh, thanks for watching and I, I hope you get started and let me know what I screwed up and what you're using grunts for and all that stuff in the comments.